We all know it's the time of year when many college and university students are graduating or getting ready to, and now looms the big issue, finding a job. Our next Mm -hmm. guest has some great tips to help. We are delighted to welcome Marie Butriani, the dean of the G. Raymond Chang School of Continuing Education at Ryerson University. Welcome to What She Said. It's a pleasure to be here, and it was very nice to see you both again. (laughs) Now, tell us... As you see it, the challenges that millennials face after completing a degree? There are certain uh, challenges that millennials face and employers face, and there are solutions for both. Okay. Millennials face the challenge of being the most educated generation in Canadian history. Uh, Canada is the most educated country per capita in the whole world. Uh, and our young people uh, are right up there as, as being the highly, highly educated. And why is that a challenge? Why is such a good thing a challenge? Is that they tend to be overqualified for the jobs they get. Now, we all did, uh, you know, jobs that uh, were under our qualifications as well decades ago. That is nothing new. The t- difference is we soon, maybe a year, uh, would get a job that uh, really fulfilled our potential. Whereas now it takes years and years for millennials to get that job to fulfill that mm-hmm. potential. On the other hand, employers are saying, we don't have the workforce we need. There are certain skills that are missing in certain areas like data analytics, uh, social media, believe it or not, um, cybersecurity, big issue, health informatics, uh, just privacy issues around big data, um, communications, project management. So there is a solution in that millennials can actually see what their qualifications are, see the jobs they would like to get, and if there are gaps, fill those gaps through continuing education or through self-learning or through volunteering or or, or any way they can to fill those gaps. Well, I mean, I think think there is a... Millennials, it's a big range because we're mm. talking what? They could be like 20 to 36. Yeah, right. Like to, well, right. Up to 1996, I think 97 okay. is when they could be born. So it's a good it, – it's a big range. Um, and the jobs are changing. As Christine often points out, there are no – it's not – you're not signing up and staying in one career forever. There are like mini micro uh, – muck jobs, That's they right. call them. You're doing so many of them. Um, how do people ferret through what they should do to prepare well, they have to be prepared just for that. that mm-hmm. And they are. Most millennials are actually prepared. They know from speaking to older millennials that they're not going to necessarily get the job that they'll be in for 30 years. Mm-hmm. And they don't necessarily want that. And and I and, and to their credit, they know that they have to be more flexible. And there really isn't anything wrong with uh, having a few jobs under your belt until you get the one that you want. But even uh, baby boomers change jobs more than once. It's, not, it's really not the way it used to be. So learn skills that are transferable. I think project management is a great example. Mm-hmm. Get oh, project PMP. Man- PMP, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Get, learn skills that are transferable. Communication. Know how to read, write, and spell well. I mean, uh, I know that there's spell check and all sorts of technologies, but employers still really value uh, literacy. So don't take that for advantage, uh, uh, for, cre- for, for, um, for granted, for granted, for granted. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, and, and so that's one thing they can do. The other is, when they're doing their resumes, uh, don't do the resumes the way we did decades ago, where it's by date and what you've done and what you grab. Employers want to see skills. Yeah, they're your skill set. That's, that's right. That's what it is. And uh, when you look at the trends in the United States, which, states which will inevitably come to Canada, employers are only looking at skills. Whether you're from Harvard or a community mm-hmm. college mm-hmm. or from a university anywhere in the world, they're looking at skills, experience, and character. One of the things I did notice, one of the things I did notice uh, with my children, who are both millennials, um, was language. Mm-hmm. Neither of them are particularly fluent in French or Spanish, but they said that was c- popping up on every job application. Well, certainly in Canada, particularly mm-hmm. for a federal government job, knowing French is important. Mm-hmm. Not always uh, necessary, but definitely puts you ahead of the curve. Uh, knowing Spanish is very important internationally, as mm-hmm. is knowing German, as is knowing Chinese. So it it depends on what they want to do. So let me present a scenario where you have someone who's taken a degree. Um, Let's say it's journalism. (laughs) And we had Diane Francis who said they should close the schools for however long. Ten years. Ten years because there are no jobs. So they're in one of those fields where the traditional box is full or it's changed. Mm -hmm. How can they bridge 
over because they're still bright and they're still, you know, informed, bridge to get to get something more general that they can get a job? Well, I would disagree with my friend Diane Francis. I don't think we should close the schools, but I think the schools have a responsibility to keep up with the changes in, in the kinds of uh, graduates that uh, we need from journalist schools. We still have journalists. I mean, we're here, aren't we? Mm. Uh, certainly the processes have changed, uh, and mainstream media is changing. Uh, social media, of course, is a necessity now, and knowing those skills is a mm-hmm. necessity. Uh, but I think now, particularly with what's going on politically in the world, there is no more important time than for journalists. Except for the fact that they're all being let go. Well, and and and, and I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> but um, I, I, I think we have to fight that. Uh, there is no more important time, I think, uh, right now, speaking as a former politician, uh, than for, for journalists to be uh, vigilant uh, and, be, uh, and, and, and fulfill their ethical obligations. And we would agree with you. One of the issues is that nobody wants to pay for the experience when they can get somebody that has some more of the more current skills out of you know out of the shop so they are they are working there but but let's switch over to what employers mm-hmm. are looking for when it comes to millennial hires they well first of all let me talk about how great millennials are they're technology oriented they're honest they're ethical they want work uh, that uh, meet their principles mm-hmm. um, but they also want a life they want balance to life they're not as uh, workaholic as the baby boomers were. And I know I'm generalizing, but we were well, pretty... Well, no, I don't think you are, because yeah. if you look on any of the job sites, you, you see work-life balance now right. as a company rating, That's which right. never happened in our day. No, no. We would clean the garages of our professors if it was to get a good <laughs> reference letter. But <laughs> those, Work-life balance? Those days are gone. <laughs> well, my, I have two millennials, and uh, one of them said to me years ago when she was in high school, uh, I'm not going to be like you and dad. I'm not going to uh, work uh, to live. Sorry, live to work. I'm going to work to live. Mm-hmm. And and so th- that's important about millennials. But at the same time, that those ethics, that honesty, that team uh, player kind of uh, philosophy is is rare and wonderful and, and I think should be embraced. On the other hand, if you're in my generation, for example, uh, in fact, we just had a, a recent uh, a master class on the new technology in education. I'm an educator. It could be daunting, the skills that you need to know in order to meet the demands of today's uh, students. And they're consumers now. Uh, so... For both age groups, for all age groups, look at the gaps that you have, that your employer thinks you have, or that a future employer demands, and and fill those gaps. There's distance education now. As I said the last time I talked to you, to you wonderful ladies, that we have ELX, Experiential Learning Exchange, mm-hmm. where there's hands-on experience, coaching, uh, networking events. Uh, at Ryerson University, we have uh, the zones. The, we have the biggest university incubator in the country where some people don't want an actual nine-to-five job. A lot of the millennials want to do um, entrepreneurial uh, positions mm-hmm. and, and create their own jobs. Go to a university that has an incubator and take advantage. I get frustrated when I don't see uh, students taking advantage of what is offered to them. Don't just go to class and, and go home. Look at everything else that the university has to offer. Career advice, tutoring, uh, incubators, uh, we have a sandbox now at Ryerson where you can take any idea and get support. At my school, at the Chang School, we're going to start uh, hackathons for people that uh, – all students from, from not necessarily technology to develop products for people with disabilities. And we're going to give them – we have a, a, a donor that will give them money to develop those products. And I bet there will be people that won't take advantage of that. And that's what I that's where I think that there's another gap. Take advantage of what's offered. We didn't have a percentage – of what young people have today at post-secondary education. Hey, we didn't have Google. <laughs> we we did not have the services that they have today. No. So take advantage yeah, of them is yeah. my advice. We typed up our essays, and if we mistyped them, we typed them again. <laughs> that's right, that's right. At 6 in the morning. That's right, exactly. <laughs> excellent, excellent in- information. Uh, look for the courses. Um, and you think specifically consider um, before choosing a postgraduate course. Absolutely. Do your homework. Um, talk to people that have your dream job. How did they get it? What skills do they need? What skills do they need now? What skills will they need in five years? And get those skills. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is what she said. Stay with us.